Especially when it's as cold outside. I've heard. Down at the bottom. Yep, there's Brittany. Wipe it off. It's supposed to help. Brittany, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? I hear you too. Okay. We're gonna we'll get started. We'll get started here in just a couple minutes. Perfect. Ready when you are. Do you guys want to Brittany, can you hear us? You tell me when. All right. Okay. We will go ahead and get started with the meeting. Uh, we'll call it at seven oh one. And first up on the agenda is Miss Brittany with our report. Hello, Ms. Brittany. Well, thank you guys for, for having me tonight uh, in the lovely world of Zoom. It's, um, you know, I guess become a friend here in 2020. I, I look forward to regular board meetings in person in the future. Again, I always prefer to, to see people as I, I drone on and on about financial numbers. Um, I didn't know, Jordan, did you have a chance to get the PDFs emailed out to everyone or would it be easiest if I try to pull them up on my screen if I can. That'd be great if you could pull up on your screen. Okay, I will I will give it my best bet. You have to allow her to get to that. She said something you can share their screen. Uh-oh. We just did our PDF. <laughs> okay, any chance you can see the audit report? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Well, I will try to um, scroll through and kind of hit the highlights that I wanted to talk about. And then if anybody has any questions uh, now or at a later date and time, if, if you think of something, I'm more than happy to answer them. So this is the audit report for the fiscal year ended June 30, 2020. 
Um, our independent auditor's report starts here on page one, and in the bottom of the page, it talks about how we are issuing an unmodified or a clean opinion in accordance with the cash basis of accounting. And so all that means is the financial statements reflect cash receipts and disbursements in and out of the district. So no um, accruals or receivables or anything like that are recorded. On page two of the opinion, we just talk about the fact that they are prepared on the cash basis of accounting. And then here at the bottom, we do note that we issue a second report, which is included later on in the financials. And that's a report required by government auditing standards. Um, here on the statement of cash receipts and disbursements, total receipts for the district during fiscal year 20 were just over $3 million. In fiscal year 19, they were about $4.8 million. Uh, that decrease is really due to the fact that in fiscal year 19, you were finalizing your draws on the loan uh, for the new station. And so that was $2.3 million in the prior year. When you look at your other normal operating sources, you'll see grants were up about $305,000, property taxes up $380,000. So overall still a really great year for the district. When you look through disbursements, you'll see total disbursements just under $3.2 million. Uh, in the prior year, as expected, they were higher as well, about $4.3 million. So down about $1.1 million from the prior year. And just like above where you were seeing a decrease in receipts due to the finalizing of station number two and the loan draws, that's where a lot of your decreases are in disbursements as well. Uh, overall, you'll see um, some new vehicle expenses of $785,000 was a pretty significant increase from the prior year. Uh, this loan payments, First Interstate Bank, that's the principal paid on the loan for station number two during the year. Uh, and then overall, just some general increases in disbursements across the board, which would be expected with station number two having a, a full year of operations during fiscal year 20. At the end, the district showed a slight excess of disbursements over receipts and ending cash just under $1.5 million. On page four is where our notes to the financial statements start. Uh, note number two talks about the summary of the district's significant accounting policies. No changes there. Uh, once again, we do define what the cash basis of accounting is and just state that it differ, differs from uh, GAAP. Well, on page five is footnote three, and that details kind of the breakout of the district's cash and cash equivalents at year end. Uh, one thing I will bring to your attention, although I, I feel like I don't have to because I know it's very much on your radar, is uh, unfortunately at June 30, there was one instance of the district's deposits being under collateralized by $198,000, and that was at Western States. And I know I've had conversations with, with really everyone about the, the process and uh, the plans to ensure that this doesn't happen in the future. So I'm, I'm confident that fiscal year 21 will be, will be a good one for that. Uh, footnote four talks about the district's participation in Wyoming retirement systems plans. So we have um, the paid fireman's pension plan B, the volunteer firefighter and EMP pension plan, and then the public employees pension plan. And like we talk about every year uh, under government auditing standard 68, uh, they actually require any entity who's participating in uh, pension plans to, well, normally uh, you would actually accrue your liability in terms of um, actuarially determined amount. But since we're cash basis and we don't record liabilities, we just include it as an FYI disclosure. And so overall total, uh, the district's actuarially determined share of the net pension liabilities was about $472,000. Uh, the last thing I'm going to kind of point out here in the financial statements is actually on page seven. And so this is the schedule of cash receipts and disbursements compared to budget. Uh, one thing we check in terms of compliance with state statutes is ensuring that total disbursements are under budgeted disbursements, which they were. 
And then our second report here in the financial statements, what I alluded to earlier, our report on internal control over financial reporting and compliance and that's required by government auditing standards. So we did identify one significant deficiency, which is consistent with prior years, uh, the segregation of duties really just relating to the, the small accounting staff that you have. Um, I know that, that I've talked to Jordan about some improvements that she made, particularly on the cash disbursement side after coming in um, in 2020. And I think that's fantastic. Um, and I think that really the uh, the cost benefit analysis currently with the district, you know, isn't there to have a larger accounting department, but I think the compensating controls with the board's involvement and the chief's involvement um, are, are definitely well thought out. And then as discussed, we did identify one issue of non-compliance with state statute, and that was the under collateralization of the one bank account. So I'm gonna try to open up um, one more attachment. And this is, uh, well, let's see what it wants to do. This is our letter to those charged with governance. Oh my gosh. And it just really highlights the summary of how the audit went. And um, I'm just gonna really quickly skim over it uh, to give you a sneak peek. The audit went really, really well. Uh, there were no changes in accounting policies, no significant or unusual transactions. Uh, the only audit adjustments we identified were those to bring the trial balance fully in accordance with cash basis. No disagreements with management, no consultations with other accountants, no significant issues, no significant difficulties. Uh, I know that, that it was Jordan's very first audit and I have to say that she did a fantastic job helping us get through the audit. And um, I mean, your records continue to be well organized and uh, really, I, I thought it went really smooth on our end. So I hope that Jordan feels the same way and uh, now she's a pro, so next year will be cake for her. Um, but uh, I definitely would like to thank Jordan for, for making this so easy on us. And I would love to answer any questions if you all have any. Thank you, Brittany. You helped me a ton. Great. Well, I thought it went well. Well, I will let you all. Go ahead. I'll let you all get on with your meeting then. Um, and like I said, if if you think of anything later or, or anything like that, please don't hesitate to to reach out. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Moving on um, to the board minutes. Did everyone have a chance to review them? Do I hear a motion? Uh, I would. There's one, just one little correction that I caught, and it's very, very minor. But that would be on item nine, D1, where it has. W, which is Wildland 21, is on assignment again. And there it's one W123. You should be an L. Oh, it's one. a small L. Oh, a big L. okay. It I just looked like a one thing. to me, but like I said, it's a very minor deal. So I can get that capitalized for you. Other than that, they're good. So I so move the minutes are approved as presented. I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Okay. Moving on to the, the treasurer's report. Hello, everybody. Uh, if you remember, last month the treasurer's report had a lot of to be determined because we didn't get a ton of those um, bank statements in in time. So I do have 
those available funds as of 11 1 now, which would have been the same as the end of 10. We can't see the report on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> back out. It's on back out. Back out. Back out all the way out. Okay, now go back in. It didn't work that time for me either. Let me go all the way out. Got it. All right. Thank you. Brenda, did you get yours? Yeah. Steve, did yours come up? Steve, did yours come up? I got mine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. Thank you, George. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, so, our operating funds in Western State Bank's check in was $218,593.74. Our emergency savings at Western State Banks was two hundred and eleven thousand and forty-three cents. The Wildland Fire Program had six thousand one hundred and eighty and eighty-five cents. The Explorer Post had one thousand seventy-five and twenty-two cents. Wyoming Bank and Trust had one thousand forty-four hundred six hundred forty-seven and thirty-four cents. And Cheyenne State Bank had two hundred forty-two thousand nine hundred and eight and ninety-one cents. If you look at our operating funds or our income this month it's extremely high um, we had two levy checks because uh october's did not come in in time for our last board meeting the first one from october the 179,077 cents was deposited already by anita um, then this month's levy check came in much larger 502,375 and 60 cents we had some interest on our bank accounts. Um, Cooper made a couple of street signs that was $55. We had two people pay their volunteer firefighter retirement, um, which resulted in 450. There's a personal check from Chief for $4.99. There's also a check from CFR for Hazmat to pay um, Max Martinez for his time with them. And then Wildland had a huge check come in as well, which Anita also has deposited already for 439, 552 and 78 cents. And then we got our six penny money. That was also two checks because it didn't come in from last month as well. So those together totaled 133,128 and 47 cents. So the total income for this month was one million two hundred and fifty-four thousand three hundred nine and sixty cents. Three hundred nine. Oh, I'm sorry, nine hundred and three and sixty cents. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next is a summary of our major expenses broken down. Um, wildland is very high, but that is to pay out our wildland firefighters as well as. Um, Fifty-five thousand seven hundred and thirty and nineteen cents going to our general fund for repayment, and then an additional fifty thousand from Wildland going to our savings account for that repayment. Um, as long as you guys vote on that in the unfinished business. Um, so our total uh, expenses this month were three hundred and six thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven and fifty-eight cents, and our operating funds available as of 11.30 in our Western State Bank checking. We had 202,654.59. The emergency fund had 211 and $7.37. The wildland fire program had 445,057.96. Explorer Post was untouched. Wyoming Bank and Trust 144,000. Six hundred forty-eight and fifty-seven cents. Cheyenne State Bank two hundred and forty-two thousand nine hundred and twenty-nine and fifty-four cents. And then your last page is just uncleared checks as of eleven thirty. Um, a lot of them are paychecks that were cash, just didn't pull out of our bank in time for them to uh, clear. And then um, a couple 
vendors that apparently didn't cash their checks with enough time either. So I expect all of those to clear by next month. What is this across the street? Blue card. That's our incident command training program. And that check was returned, the address that it was sent to. It was just one number on the zip code, actually, that they decided to sell. So it's being resubmitted. That was Alan Brunacini. His company was across the street. So they named the company across the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's like across the street production. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Hmm. I move to accept the treasurer's report. Thank you. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. One more quick thing. Um, I did, as long as you guys sign them and everything looks good, I did make deposit slips for the checks from Wildland General and Wildland Savings. And they're in your deposit. You just need to take the physical checks. Okay. Okay, Chief's report. All right, good evening. Uh, start off, thank you all for taking the time to come in during this craziness. And thank you for everyone that's on Zoom for participating because it makes it so that we can conduct business even though there's a limit of 10 people uh, by the governor's ordinances in healthcare. So COVID-19 continues to impact um, our community and our organization. Uh, we continue to take appropriate actions to limit our exposures. Uh, we have gone to masks in the station unless you're in your own private office or unless you're in your own private dorm. We've uh, been deconning our stations continually and spraying down the stations every morning and continue to do protocols out on emergency response to limit our exposure. Knock on wood, we've done pretty good at keeping it out of our, out of our system. So um, we hope to continue that. We've been informed by county and state health that the vaccinations have started to arrive in the state. Uh, approximately 1,800 of them arrived this week. Uh, and every other week from now on, the state will be receiving vaccinations. The first rounds of the vaccinations are gonna go to um, hospitals and healthcare facilities with seniors. The fire service um, is in tier one also, but we're second or third um, aspect of the vaccination plan. We will start seeing vaccinations, hopefully for district two, the first week of January. And when we get closer to that, about three weeks, uh, Manny and I will work out our um, process of vaccinating our folks. The recommendation right now from state health is to only uh, vaccinate a portion of your membership because um, the side effects do make you feel ill for a couple of days potentially. So uh, we'll be uh, monitoring that. And uh, our goal is to get everybody done. They think that all the fire districts possibly by March will be done um, as the vaccination comes out. I saw today that uh, another manufacturer of vaccinations is said to be approved by Friday of this week which will increase the volume of production of the vaccinations for the country. So this is a good thing. I know none of us love vaccinations, um, but it's getting us closer to back to normal in six months and nine months down the road. Um, so that's COVID-19. And as you can tell, we continue to, to be impacted with what we're doing and it's on the top of our mind on everything that we're doing. Uh, Rescue 2-1, so in the process of uh, working with District 8 over the last few months, when we pulled Rescue 2-1 out of service, they expressed interest in being able to use, utilize it for their uh, rope rescue equipment. And so we became stuck in this quandary, well, we could sell it to you, but then that doesn't make sense if we're all going to be one organization in six months. So uh, what Josh and I came to present was to do a memorandum of understanding for the next few months until we know for sure if we're merging or not merging to provide them use of that vehicle. And so under new business, you'll see that we have an MOU to present to you, which basically will say that they take all responsibility, have to ensure, have to maintain it. Uh, and in the event that we do not merge, they would have first opportunity to buy it then from us. 
Um, it just gets it from sitting stale to being put into use. So I'll present that under new business. Um, uh, Chuck, uh, update, Chuck has been moved to a rehab facility as I noted. Uh, Amy is flying out this week with Rusty. Rusty's gonna be flying with to accompany her um, to get her settled in and uh, to help Chuck through the rehab process. So this is a, a big step, but he's got a long road ahead of him. The families ask that they keep that pretty tight mm -hmm. so that way it's respectful um, and we're not getting a thousand calls to Chuck or to, to Amy. So. We ask that uh, you keep that within our family of the fire service um, for their for their sanity and, and their wishes. Uh, the wildland position we posted, we had to postpone the interviews because Rusty decided to make more money for the district. Thank you, Rusty. But tomorrow uh, we spend the, the morning, we'll be interviewing four uh, um, candidates uh, through Zoom. And uh, we have a panel of uh, Rusty, myself, Manny, and Josh Van Black uh, to do the reviews of those. And then uh, we'll have a, a proposal out, hopefully by the end of the week for the person we select. So that's exciting for us. That position solely funded by Wildland. It's not funded by general fund. So what Rusty's done with the Wildland program and generating cash the last couple of years um, continues to increase the service that we can provide in our community because when they're not on deployment, they're filling shifts in the stations and running calls and, and serving the citizens of Laramie County. So uh, that's a, it's a great partnership with our wildlife program. Anita reminded me of um, 20, 20 years ago when District 2 was borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. And um, we've got to the point where we have a little bit of money that we need to start to have plans for. And as you know, we've been working on those plans for a while, but I wanted to highlight the major projects that we have planned for 2021. SCBAs, we've been kicking the doors down on grants for the last two years to replace our SCBAs without any luck. We're working right now, Manny and uh, Amanda Kreefbaum are working on uh, a SLIB grant um, application, which is due in January for the June um, SLIB meeting. And that's about a $450,000 project, rough numbers, which we would have to pay half of it, it's a 50-50 match grant. So there's $200,000 right there that we could be susceptible um, if we're awarded that grant. Medium duty rescue is the next major apparatus in our fleet that is up on our capital improvement plan that replaces rescue 2-2 out at station two. Uh, that's about a 200, um, $250,000, almost $300,000 apparatus that uh, we're working on getting the design and getting bids for to start working towards um, going to RFP for that next year's budget cycle. Uh, Command uh, 2 2 is up. It turned 100,000 miles this week. It's up for next year to replacement on our capital improvement plan. So it will be about another sixty-five dollars to $70,000. Um, command truck. Uh, my, my command truck, my vehicle that I am issued is also due. We're going to hold off a year because I don't have the miles on it um, yet. We haven't reached that 100,000 miles. So we'll hold on that. Those are three major projects and about uh, uh, just under five, uh, just under $800,000 worth of capital outlay that we could potentially spend this next year. Uh, if our numbers come in right for the 2021 budget cycle. So when we look at those bank accounts and we see, oh boy, we're going to have to open up more accounts to absorb this money, know that there is a plan for that money. It's just we're a little bit conservative and uh, not wanting to do all the projects at once to spend it all. So, um, so those are major projects coming down the pipe. I wanted to give you an update on the six penny project because the commissioners are going to start working pretty hard on six penny as we approach spring and into the fall. They're anticipating that the last six penny project list will expire in June. They'll have collected all the money for those six penny projects, which we were awarded for station two. They will propose new projects to be voted on this fall, fall 2021. 
And a year ago, we submitted our project, which is a new station on Happy Jack, along with a fire engine for that new station in the sum of $2.5 million. So we are on their radar. Uh, every time uh, I see the commissioners, we have that conversation and we're grateful for their support. They are very proud of the work that we did to get station two up and running quickly. Uh, they thought that was a great benefit to our community and it showed the taxpayers the efficiency that government can work when we all work hard at it. So um, they're in favor of our project and uh, look forward to seeing if we can get it passed this uh, next fall. With that said, there's a lot of legwork that goes into that one public meetings that will start this summer leading into the fall where we'll meet with all the civic groups and all the social groups and post open houses if COVID's not here anymore and uh, work on marketing the need for that station. Uh, with that, we want to have it so that it's shovel ready so our community knows what they're voting for. So we're working on land right now. We've met with King Ranch to talk about land. Uh, we're working on Cox Ranch. If Steve Price, if you have any connections to them, okay, to talk land. And we're also just, looking just at- Just uh, King, but not- Yeah. Not. Yep. All of those landowners are in favor of a station there. It's just a matter of figuring out what's gonna work. King Ranch specifically said, we wanna, we wanna help you. So we just gotta figure out how to make it work. Uh, there is also a chunk of state land out there that in the event that nothing else works, we could go to State Land Investment Board just like we did for Station 2. Um, so we're working on that. We want that sewn up before we go to the taxpayers for vote to say that we have land, we're ready. Um, station design is the next piece of that. So Manny's heading up a committee uh, to include a couple members of District 8 and also our members to work on what that station looks like. Um, so again, we have a design and we're ready to go to RFP to select a builder in the event that we get approved for six penny. And then Cooper is growing and learning how to uh, look and build fire engines. So he is heading up a committee again uh, of uh, folks uh, to design that next engine and what that's gonna cost. So we have real numbers uh, to work with as six penny comes. So a lot of little projects going on there that um, that are a lot of legwork that take us time to get there, but uh, it's important that we do that. On top of that, those three projects up above, SCBAs and the medium duty rescue, Paul Cricks is leading up the SCBA along with our members and a member of District 8. Um, they're gonna be testing all January and February. They'll be testing uh, SCBAs and that committee is gonna come with a presentation to the administration on what their selection is uh, as far as best value, customer service, performance, all those pieces of the SCBA. They're also taking uh, Shine Fires tests that they did a year ago and Loveland and Front Range Fire are testing SCBAs currently. And so they're gonna use those also as references for uh, their testing. The medium duty rescue, Josh Trajan is heading up a, a committee on that. He's working closely with Manny on uh, what that looks like. And then the command truck, I think, is just Manuel, right? Nope, it's me, Brenton Ness, um, Kate Morrison, and Chuck Smith. Perfect. So it's Manny's committee again. So we've assigned that work out for them. It's opportunities for them all to grow and have ownership in that process. So we have a lot, a lot of irons in the fire and a lot, a lot going on this side work amongst our everyday responsibilities that we have. And I'm really proud of all those folks for stepping up. I think Manny got inundated. I think all of you, when you put out committees, our membership flooded you all with wanting to be on it, which is really, really fun to see. So we're grateful for our membership's support. All of you asked us last month um, to meet with Anita and Jordan to discuss our money because we need to do some stuff. As Brittany alluded to, we have fought the collateralization of our accounts for years now. And it seems like when we get it taken care of, the bank all of a sudden drops the ball and doesn't write us a letter or doesn't uh, increase the protection of our money in their banks. So we have a recommendation under old business um, after we met. Uh, Anita, again, thank you for your wisdom after all these years of watching our finances. Uh, you know, just the insight that you can't get without having your nose in those numbers a lot. And uh, so we'll present that during 
old business. And other than that, we have no grant updates. AFG grant is opening here in the next roughly 30 days. So it'll be grant season again. Um, Amanda Kreefbaum has been doing outstanding working on this slip grant, much more detailed than, than uh, just more talented than we are at that stuff. So we're excited to introduce her to the AFG grants. Again, she has some experience with it in the past and she's gonna be assisting us with our AFG and our safer grants for 2020. Other than that, that's all I have for tonight. Any questions for me? Oh, but I want to tell Rusty, thank you for escorting Amy to uh, Salt Lake. I think that's going to be a comfort for her, knowing that she's going to have somebody with her. It's my privilege. Any questions? No. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jason. Okay, moving on to Manny. Good evening all, uh, short report for me tonight. Uh, District two is at 1,004 calls so far this year compared to 984 on this same date last year. Uh, we were dispatched to 73 calls for service for the month of November and nothing too significant in the normal medical calls, vehicle fires, vehicle accidents, uh, nothing too, uh, too big to write home about. Um, Fire District two has also called out two times for the drone one time for a uh, vehicle accident for the Shine Police Department, and one time for a loose cow. Yeah, did you find them? We did not, because it gave us the wrong area. We, we were searching the area, and it was, by the time we searched that area, it was two miles that way. <laughs> they thought they had it contained, but they didn't. It was elusive, so. I was going to call Steve and have him come out on his horse. I feel like they were chasing like police cars. I don't know. Very well. No, they don't. Um, as far as shifts go, our residents worked over 3,330 hours combined. Our volunteers signed up for over 88 shifts. Uh, volunteer participation right now is, is unbelievable. Um, every, pretty much every single day we have volunteers pulling shifts. And surprisingly right now, our new class, which we typically uh, don't see a lot of our new recruits jumping right in. But I'd say daily there there's a new recruit here on top of having other volunteers that come uh, do shifts. So every day I'm getting an email from one of them saying, "Can you please add me on a shift on this day? Can you please add me on a shift on that day?" So it's been outstanding. Uh, one of our new recruits, uh, Fabio, is a airline pilot and had the entire month off of November, and I think he probably spent 20 days here wow. in November just trying to absorb everything. So. That was awesome to see. Um, so volunteer center for over 88 shifts for a total of 704 hours of shift time work. And our command officers covered over 575 hours of command shifts for our district responding to our community needs. Below, I just have a quick little chart of, of all the stuff I presented and that is all I have. My accountant is verified financial advisor, Joe Kelly. He's yeah, yeah. 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 He's been and he's yeah, he's been up. Any questions? Anybody got questions out that are zoomed in? Nope. Okay. Thanks, Manny. No problem. Okay, moving on to the resident program. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm coming at you from Zoom this evening. Pull up my report real quick. Um, so first and foremost, uh, got our resident hiring finished up. So we decided on four residents. Um, it was a pretty competitive process. It was definitely um, a growing year in our applicant pool. So pretty exciting for us just watching that grow, how many people are getting interested and how the word's getting out there. Um, we have one from California, one from Colorado, and two that are going to be from Wyoming. Um, so pretty excited to get them started. They're going to be moving in the January 2nd and 3rd with their academy starting on the 4th. Currently, I've got them working on their paperwork and all that. That way it's all handled prior to them ever getting here. Um, so make it a quick start and a little bit easier on Jordan and the rest of the team as far as kind of the new hire process um, is on the paperwork side. Um, 
Uh, they're also working on their introduction profiles, like I said, so I'll make sure to, that you guys are included when I send those out. Um, just a quick snippet of who they are and a picture of them, just so you're able to kind of put a pay, face to the name prior to them ever starting. Training's been really good, um, consistent stuff. You know, Paul and Cam and Caden have done a really good job putting stuff out there. So there's always something for us to do, always something for us to work on. Um, so it's been a really good thing we've had going on lately. Um, they had an EVOC course this weekend. Um, I'm not sure if Paul, I imagine will touch on that, you know, how we all kind of run over each other's stuff. Um, so I won't go too depth into that, but we had a lot of residents uh, participate and they all said had really good things to say about it. Uh, monthly skills requirement are still going really well. Um, like we kind of hit on before just a little bit for them to make sure that they're staying on top of their basic skills, pulling hose lines, our Lucas device set up, the four gas, forcible entry. Um, just making sure that basic set of skills is really staying intact. Um, leadership journey, uh, registration is gonna end this Thursday, 12, 17. Um, it's just going to give Cooper and I a chance to really put together all the binders and get all the classwork prepared. It's looking more and more like it's going to be on Zoom. Um, another thing that Chief and I had talked about is possibly just doing separate locations um, with one person that will kind of monitor that room. So whether Cooper or I um, or Chief is at that location for the evening, um, but we still have an instructor possibly Zoomed in. We're looking at some different options there. Um, but have had a ton of growth in, or in um, interest in that. So we have 22 people registered currently. Uh, six of those from LCFD2, five from LCFD1, three from FE Warren, three from District 10, two from District 8, one from Cheyenne City Fire, and one from District 6, and one from the Laramie County Sheriff's Office. Um, so a pretty broad group, definitely uh, going to be a really cool year for our leadership journey. Station duties, um, no big projects or anything that I'm working on. I do want to Kind of put out a big shout out to Station 2. Those guys have been really working their butts off lately with trucks. Um, not that everyone doesn't do a good job of that, but really lately they've kind of shown above and beyond. Um, so definitely a shout out for those guys over there. They're doing really well. Um, and then normal call volume like Manny hit on. Residents are doing a good job of responding. Uh, included on there what their call volumes were or totals were for each one. Um, and that's starting from the day of our last board meeting, so November 9th, um, up until yesterday. There's a couple outliers on there. Um, David Kinsvater was away on a military assignment for the guard, um, and Ellie was at home for a couple doctor's appointments. But other than that, um, definitely growing numbers there. Kind of weird, a little bit different from when I was a resident way back when, because um, those guys, you know, we're split into two stations now, so they're only responding um, to the big stuff when we have both engines and then, you know, to either side of our community, um, which definitely, you know, as we've talked about is really taking the burden off of um, the one station response and done, you know, wonders for our community and a faster response. Um, and that's all I've got, unless anyone's got any questions. Is the leadership journey, is that the band of brothers? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, ma'am. That's a neat program. Any questions? I'm good. Well, you guys are awfully quiet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions out there? Nope. Okay, thanks, Josh. Paul, your turn. Good evening, everybody. Um, you know, as we as we finish up the last quarter of the year, uh, there's lots of things coming to uh, finalizations for folks. Uh, recertification for EMS licensure at the state level. Um, the last uh, last two weeks of the quarter are coming up, so minimum company standards are getting knocked out, and that all reflects in uh, the November and into December numbers here. Um, so overall, November's training stats, we had 42 members attend some sort of training. 24 of those members were volunteer members. Again, reflects uh, what Manny was talking about with uh, participation and, and uh, shift work. Uh, 34 classes were available, 71 training hours. Um, and then the breakdown of those hours, as, as you guys can see, uh, 11, and 11, almost 12 hours of driver operator training. 16 hours of EMS training as folks are trying to get those last hours for the year to recertify. 
um, 38 hours of fire, fire related training, whether that's, uh, out on the fire ground or, um, or drills in station, <clears throat> three hours of JPR training. So, um, the, the new recruits don't come out of Academy with 100% of their job performance requirements. Uh, some of the odds and ends that don't easily get wrapped into uh, fire ground drills are, uh, are touched on and uh, completed throughout the, the year. Um, and as we have those new recruits coming in, they're asking for those, uh, those odds and ends to be completed while they're on shift, which is pretty neat. Uh, the goal is to have all of those um, job performance requirements of the folks that are uh, well engaged done by April uh, of this year so that they have their firefighter one knocked out. And then uh, two hours of officer development to, to kind of round out the numbers there. Um, touching on uh, Josh, Josh touched on Chris Graves and uh, some of the platoon lieutenants have been putting on some additional training. Um, we've had extra extrication training set up by our platoons and uh, Chris took on the EVOC training out at FE Warren. FE Warren has a big driving pad available and uh, he, he organized a, a EVOC or emergency vehicle operations course uh, to happen this past weekend on Saturday. And he ran two, uh, two separate um, opportunities for that. And it was, uh, there was snow on the course. So uh, not only did they have the, um, the obstacles to navigate, but they also had some uh, adverse road conditions to try to try to work through as they navigated those obstacles. Um, in at the end of January, moving on to my next bullet point down there, um, the Laramie County, um, I don't know what we call ourselves, the Laramie County uh, Training Officers Committee has uh, organized a command officers weekend. This is gonna be uh, January 29, 30, and 31. So Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. And we're gonna work from the fog on trying to unify some of our command structure and operations. Um, right now as a county, some of us are doing pretty well together and others are still kind of outliers as far as vocabulary and whether you get a command officer or you might not get a command officer and, and how, how that fire scene actually plays out. Um, so we're trying to trying to work towards more of a unified uh, approach to uh, fire command during this weekend, which is pretty cool. Um, we've got almost almost a hundred percent involvement. I've got I've got yeses from uh, probably ninety percent of the districts across the county, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, when I first uh, approach the subject or, or put this out there, I was, I was, I was hesitant because I was like, well, I don't know, you know, there's, there's folks that are pretty set in their ways and I don't know what kind of interest we might get from this, but um, there's actually quite a bit of uh, excitement or energy surrounding this class. Um, the way we're going to do that is we're going to have three separate locations with a live instructor at each of the locations. And we're going to limit those classroom spaces to 10, but we're going to link all three locations via Zoom. So we have a virtual classroom of 30, uh, but we have in-person learning happening in, in small groups of 10 or less, which is uh, very beneficial for those questions to be asked. Um, platoon and membership training update. Last month, I mentioned that uh, we tasked the platoons to each take a Saturday or two Saturday membership trainings. And we met about it. I gave them uh, good subjects to work from on December 1st. And uh, last week they came back and said, these are, these are the dates that we're gonna, the platoons are gonna take. And these are the subjects that we're gonna take throughout the year which leaves four Saturday membership trainings left to the training division to organize and, and uh, put on. So it'll be, uh, it'll be pretty neat to see how um, the platoons engage our members through Saturday membership trainings. Uh, we, we, 
we cherish those Saturday membership trainings because we got rid of the, the Wednesday night trainings, which was the night that we would all come together and, and have camaraderie and, and, you know, BS with each other and, and, uh, and kind of catch up. And, and we lost some of that family feeling when we lost those Wednesdays. So we rely on those Saturdays to, to bring the membership together. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to see where that goes and, and uh, how, our, how our platoons can lead us um, through those Saturday membership trainings. Um, I did skip over the bullet point there, the car seat technician class, the Wyoming Highway Patrol and Safe Kids are putting on another car seat technician class or CPS class um, in January. And Josh has a list of the folks that are going to that. I believe three or four of our members will uh, be car seat technicians after that class. With that, that is all I have for the training division report. Do you have any questions for me? I'm hearing crickets again, Paul, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. You're doing such a good job, we don't have to ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay, who's going to talk about engineering? Anybody? Not much to report. Not much to report. We've been doing here. All our stuff is running pretty good after paying Patrick many thousands of dollars. And station wise, we did a uh, new dishwasher at the station. And so uh, they just don't last. And uh, we're fighting uh, washer and dryers over at station two, which are a year old that aren't holding up either. So, really? yeah, well, they're, they're, they're going 24, 24 hours a day. But, and that's what, when we talk to the folks at Wills, they're like, these aren't designed for what you guys are using them for. They make a commercial line, which almost looks like a 1970s all steel <laughs> dishwasher, mm -hmm. literally with the crank dial instead of a digital, mm -hmm. when, when these die, we'll replace them with those. He says, that's the only thing that's going to hold up to you using them nonstop like that. So they won't be a uh, fancy front load washers and dryers. It'll look like, like you went back to the 1970s and had your mom and dad's Kenmore. Like the one over here? No, they're even heavier. No. They're, they're top load. It's like going into a laundromat. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been in a laundromat mm -hmm. with the, essentially the same type of washer and dryer, a small washer and dryer that you find in a laundromat. Have you ever looked at a commercial? Uh, That's what these are. Because like at Bella Fuso, um, they have one, it takes 90 seconds. Sure. I mean, it heats itself up, it uses less water, and in 90 seconds the load is done. I oh, said, I want one of those for my house. Well, for the dishwashers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. we did. We looked at it. The problem is the plumbing for our buildings. It uh -huh. wasn't set up for it. Uh -huh. So you have to do a commercial plumbing system. We looked at it for station two and we designed mm -hmm. that too. Yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Man, you'll probably be taking notes to try to make it happen in the new station mm -hmm. again. But yeah, put them on the tray, put it through, yeah. and it's done. Yeah, yeah. just have to. Yep. Yeah. They make a mess when you put the wrong soap in them, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did do <laughs> once. Yeah. Ours is automatically cooked up for soap. Yeah. We, uh, other than that, it's status quo. Patrick's completed all of our projects except for brush two seven. It's, it's just finishing up. He's, he's going to load it on a tray and bring it down here. He's so, sitting on stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're back to square one. The the towers uh, got its engine rebuilt in it, and it passed certification uh, last month. So it's up and operational going again. And wildland trucks, Rusty will touch on, but that he's got some in the shop getting adjustments and tidied up after the long season. But other than that, um, Cooper and Manny fixed the plow today. We're just filling in for Chuck until he can come supervise us again. And we're trying to expand our vocabulary when we do those projects in, in, uh, in representation of, uh, of that Chuck will say certain words. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Rusty, you ready? I sure am. Good evening. <clears throat> so Wildland 2, 1, and 2, 3 are back on the board nationally. So we'll see if we can get, get one more roll for the year. Um, it's not looking good, but that's a good thing um, for the other, com you know, these communities that are affected. 
Um, we're currently at National Preparedness Level 1, which had switched during our board meeting last month. I think I'd mentioned that it would probably go to that. So uh, it's at the lowest level. So fire danger is um, a lot lower across the country. There's plenty of local resources available to respond to those local fires. Um, as of December, um, there's seven active large fires. There's five in California. Um, a couple of those are some of the big ones are just finally getting um, put to bed. Um, there's one in Texas and one in Missouri. Uh, Wildland 21 was deployed to the Cameron Peak fire for a month. Um, we just got back into Cheyenne last Monday. Um, between the engine and crew, it grossed just over $90,000. Uh, Linda Berkefeld and Michelle Lane um, in our support services have been out doing finance and comp claims. Linda was down helping on Cameron Peak and Michelle was over at East Troublesome. Um, currently, our entire wildland team is back in Cheyenne. Everybody's home. We have fire building caught up again. I spent today doing a couple more. Uh, we do have a couple more checks coming in. So that'll be another probably $300,000. Um, predictive services is saying that the season though could go through March. It's gonna be mostly in the South and Southeast states. Uh, Michelle Lane just took a position on a, one of the Southern teams. So that could get us down into the, the Gulf states, down into Florida, um, Texas. Um, so it might open some opportunities for us to get out when we typically wouldn't be gone. Um, Chief already touched on it. We're interviewing for the full-time firefighter engine boss uh, tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get that closed out. We're currently shopping for a replacement for Wildland 2-3. Um, it's gonna go out to Horse Creek to Station three, and it'll be put into a local response only status. It won't be used for the wildland program anymore. So just trying to add to the, the stables for local response. So we're gonna replace the forestry that's at Horse Creek with a type three engine that's got both a structure pump and a, a pony pump for pump and roll. So they can do wildland or structure with it. We've grossed 117,000 off of Wildland 2-3 this season. We paid 40 grand for it, plus the outfitting. So we came out pretty good with that one to be able to turn it um, over to, to Al and his crew. We grossed 118,000 on Wildland 2-1. And Wildland 2-1 has been the workhorse of this whole program. We probably made 300,000 off of that engine. We paid $15,000 for it. Um, we grossed $32,000 off of Tinder 2.4 on the one roll. We had it on in the Mullen fire for three weeks. Um, so we, year after year, we use it once and that's it, but, um, it pulls in some revenue for us. And then, uh, we made three, we grossed 3,000 off of support 2.2 when I went down to Arizona single resource. And then we build out over 10,000 crew hours this season. So it's just been one heck of a season for District 2. And that's all I got. Any questions? Get those crickets again. So thank you. Yep. Thank Good you job, too. by the way. Yeah, thank you to everybody, especially you. Yeah, we had a heck of a, a crew this year. Everybody wanted to get out, and we never turned down one assignment. So, you know, at the one point, we had three apparatus out. We were making $4,500 a day off of the engines and tender. So kudos. Thank you to you, and pass the thank yous on to your crews from us. I sure will. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm.
I'm ready. Okay. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, to start off, uh, just, uh, we had a successful Christmas parade with Tower 2 1, and it ran. <laughs> after Thanksgiving, so uh, my little brother Trevor and my mom came up for that. And they were really happy to be a part of the parade. Or Trevor was my mom was watching, but it was it was good times. Um, Trevor, or sorry, <laughs> not Trevor. Um, we're planning on taking Tower Two One to Effie Warren. Um, they're doing a Christmas parade on December twenty third. Um, that's kind of tentative still with the. Uh, state orders, all that stuff, but um, we're planning on it. We have a crew lined up for it, so when they say yes, we'll go. But, um, uh, this Wednesday, uh, District 2 and CFR are kind of partnering together to uh, help a former homeless family in need. Um, this gal has four daughters, um, just got out of an abusive relationship with her ex-husband. Um, they were living in the car for a little while, so um, we reached out with uh, the district and got furniture, dishware, stuff like that, um, that we're going to present to them Wednesday, um, and then tomorrow we'll be, um, we all kind of pitched in some cash to get some gift cards for, to Lowe's, or, or just a piece of gift card where they could go to wherever to get what they need. Um, if anyone wants to still pitch in, um, we can take cash and we'll just get those gift cards well. Um, 2020 banquet, probably saw my email. We're going to postpone it till June. Um, February was being a little too optimistic, um, and this is definitely the banquet. We don't want to cancel. I think we all owe it to ourselves to have a good banquet and with the amount of um, dedication everybody has had this year just to make sure we're still serving our community. Um, definitely not the year to cancel. So we're going to push it back to June and make it the best we can. So um, support services team will take that time to collect the donations as much as we can and um, make sure we have a good one. Um, sent in artwork for our new graphics on our fire safety trailer. Um, this week when the weather's a little more cooperative, we'll be trying to pull the old decals off and clean it up a little bit, make it a, hopefully make it a little uh, presentable right now because it's kind of sun weather and all that. So um, my graphic partners, Dan with my graphic partners, he should be coming in with a quote this week um, sometime. Um, still kind of playing phone tag with Teasley Insurance who we're uh, talking about sponsoring the decals for that trailer. So um, I keep bugging his assistant and she's probably sick of me, but he's got a very big stack of calls, I guess, to return. So um, no major developments coming up in our area. And then uh, we're starting to work on more AFG grant stuff. Um, ideas we, Chief and I talked about were uh, providing water cans to ranchers throughout our district. Um, kind of outcast, it's a little bit different um, prevention plan and that's majority of the fires we run is gas fires. So what better way to uh, get a quick knock on it if ranchers were able to have that on their truck than um, getting too crazy out of hand um, and then calling us. So uh, the Cheyenne Living Magazine should be out this month along with the uh, Christmas tree safety article and uh, decoration article. Keep an eye out for that. And then just as Chief said, I'll be taking charge of the Type 2 Engine Design com Committee for the Six Penny Project. So we'll, we've been starting to reach out to manufacturers and starting to get those, that ball rolling on that. And then as Josh said, we're just uh, gearing up for the 2021 leadership journey and we'll start making binding binders for that and everything in uh, next week. Any questions? Do you, does the family need other furniture or anything else? No, so they, um, biggest need right now is uh, bedding, twin size bedding for the girls' beds. And I think he took, or, or 
um, CFR took care of a couple of that. Um, and then pretty much just gift cards so they could get those last minute stuff that we didn't think of. Or, okay. so. Fire. There is one uh, development, Cooper, that isn't going to come across our radar, and uh, that is we have a development on uh, Happy Valley Estates um, Phase 2, which was platted in 1978. The roads were put in in 1978, or they were initially carved out, but never built on. And the developer is in the process of building that development up now. So the challenge is it's already pre-approved to 1978 standards. The county is uh, working with the developer to upgrade some of the road requirements to meet today's standards. But uh, one loophole in our county planning system is there's no sunset clause to those Developments if they weren't built but were platted and recorded, they can be built 30 years later, like this one is. So we have about 50 homes in the, in the next phase of that, and there's two other phases after that that are platted that are actually adjacent to that development, which are in District 10. So it, it's literally on the corner of District 8's district, our district, and District 10's district, way, way out. Um, so that's unique challenges there. And then one final thing on planning, the um, Chiefs Association has recommended some rules for subdivision development to include water supply and um, some options for that. And we reached out to the commissioners, the commissioners have approved it um, to go to public comment. Before it goes to public comment, we are trying to schedule a meeting with the Southeastern Wyoming Homeowners, Home Builders Association to get their a review of it um, before it goes to public comment, so we could kind of fend off any major objections that might be in it prior to it going to public comment. We anticipate that meeting happening in January. Uh, Matt Butler from the Fire Warden's Office has been working on trying to get that meeting set up with the Builders Association. So that's a big deal. That outlines when a cistern is required, when it's not required, um, and mm -hmm. some funding for that. Um, process so that the developer doesn't have to fund it all in the own. So essentially uh, everybody pays in, so it generates a pot of money that can fund cisterns and fire protection in the future to include land for new fire stations if it's more than 10 miles away from an existing fire station and it's a large development. So we're trying to do some strategic planning for the fire service in the whole county through um, planning division. So those are other projects we're working on with risk reduction. So that old that development you're talking about, it's basically like grandfathered in then. Yep. Yep, because it's platted and recorded. On paper, those roads show up today and all those lots show up today. And, uh, but in reality, there, none of them are there. Hmm. Yep. Are the roads just not wide enough or just? Or uh, the... the major piece of the roads is uh, the new requirements required uh, to an ingress and an, in, an egress and an ingress, uh, in and out, two ways in and out for uh, ev evacuations. Currently, that platted area only has one way in and out. So they're working on trying to establish a, a second way in to that development. That's their big hold up now. And then widths, road widths, and crown heights, and uh, deadheads, and uh, cul de sacs, and all those types of things as far as meeting those, those new codes. The other challenge is when that was platted in 1978, those roads are essentially owned by the county, and the county doesn't take ownership of new roads anymore. So there's no maintenance plan for those roads currently either. And thus, they have to uh, work through that with the developer on who's going to maintain them and how they're going to be maintained. Mm. 
Anything else before we move on? Oh, Jordan, I just want to make sure um, we put for the minutes for this meeting to make sure that we put in there that we were Zoomed and we were open, that it was open to the public. Okay. Just in case. Yep, all good. As long as we have the record for that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on to unfinished business, um, District 8 and 2 meeting. Near you. <laughs> well, I think first hats off to uh, Angie and Kelly. Kelly. I always get Kim and Kelly mixed up. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly for all the hard work they did last month. They've, they've been working on uh, on some of those technical meetings with attorneys and insurance and auditors and that sort of stuff. So I think uh, Angie will give you the details for that. But in all, it's uh, pretty exciting. Uh, we um, had a contest for name of what potentially could be the new district. We narrowed that down to four names to be voted on and that closed tonight. And I haven't looked at the final numbers, but we'll have a proposal for a name for the new um, district, potential district as of tomorrow, pending legal review uh, by the attorneys to make sure that name would be legal for us to have under state statute. Um, but we had, as of this afternoon, I looked, it was 102 people that had voted on those names. So pretty neat to see both memberships participating in the process. Uh, another note, uh, one of our platoon leaders, um, Chuck Snare, is also a District 8 member now because he moved out that way. And so he's wearing dual hats, running with District 8 and us. And uh, he sat through their officers meeting last week and had nothing but positive things to say about their organization and also their organization talking about the potential of the future. We have obviously all of us have uneasiness and concerns of what uh, might or might not happen, but the overall flavor from their officers was we're excited for this to happen. So um, proud of that and Angie, you can fill in all the details now of what you guys have been doing. Um, well, it's like Jason said that, that uh, Kelly is on District 8's board, and I think she said she's their newest member. So this is all pretty new for her. So this it was a huge learning curve for her also. Um, but her and I met um, two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Um, we met with the insurance guys in the morning. Our, our insurance guy, Ray Gallegos, to hub um, to find out what we needed to do in it, when we come together between District 8 and District 2. Now, District 8 is under a different insurance plan right now. Um, and at some point, we're going to have a meeting and have the two come to that meeting and um, present their their policies or whatever. Yeah, right, proposals, right. And then the uh, subcommittee or both boards will make the decision on which way to go. Um, the other meeting we had uh, was with the auditors, McGee, Hearn, and Pies. And the good news is, there is, is that we're both using them. So they were familiar with both districts, financials and everything. And it was, in fact, it was Brittany that we met with. And Brittany said that, you know, she didn't see any issues with it as far as their concern. Um, she did give us a few questions to um, address to the lawyer that we also saw <laughs> that week also. We went downtown and uh, Kelly and I and Josh was with us. Uh, Josh, uh, District 8's fire chief. He was also a part of that meeting. Um, we met with Deb Roden um, from Woodhouse, Roden and Nethercott. Nethercott, yeah. Um, and it was, we, we, between the three of us, we had a lot to present to her. So she was taking furious notes. <laughs> um, 
So we, she, we left her with some homework. Like she's gonna do research on the, the, the um, state statutes and you know a few other things from that Brittany gave us, the questions that Brittany gave us for her. And, and so she's gonna um, be emailing us with this information so we can possibly take that next step. Um, the goal is right now is to consolidate by 1 July, which is the start of the new fiscal year. That's the goal. So we have a lot to do in these next six months. Um, the subcommittee that was put together was myself and Steve from District 2, and then it's Jamie and Kelly from District 8. Jamie is their board president, and she was here at the October's meeting, I think she was here. Um, and then, of course, it's uh, Jason and Josh, and they're part of that also. Um, Steve, I wanted to let you know that um, Deb, the lawyer, said that she would be more than happy to work with us on combining the, the two sets of bylaws. Okay, because I started, I started here, but that'd be good. Yeah, she said she'd be more than happy to help us bring those two together, good. bring them up to date, bring them current. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, she was very, very accommodating. She really is. She's a cool person. For yeah. two hundred dollars an hour, she owes. Yes. Well, actually, <laughs> I don't know what her fee is. She didn't say specifically what her fee is, but she did say that she is willing to go work with us and do all this work for us, and she's willing to hold off on her payment until we come together as one department, yeah. and that way, that's how we can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, she says, and then that way, financially, we just write her one check under the new department, mm -hmm. whatever that new name is going to be. And again, this is all pending on the voters agreeing to this. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple more meetings to go between now and, and April, May, because uh, we were looking at uh, maybe putting this out for the special vote in that April, May time frame. And if it is not agreed upon by the two districts, the, the uh, residents of the two districts, she said that at that point, then we would discuss how to split it. Either 50-50, you know, her bill, we would pay half, and oh. district date would pay the other half kind of thing. Um, so she's got a lot of things on her list. Of course, she's got the longest list. Um, and everybody said that they're going to put things together for us and they're going to email them to myself, Kelly, and Jason and Josh so that there's everybody's involved in this whole process. Um, when we get to the point with the bylaws, that I'll definitely let you know, you know when that's going to be and all that good stuff. Um, and then maybe. I don't, we'll work it out later. So that's where we're at right now. You know, we've we've appro approached this whole thing with can it be done? And if it can, what do we need to do to make this work? And so that's where they're the three of them are coming from, or four of them, where they're coming from at this point. They're gathering all their information and then they will come back and present it to the subcommittees. So then I will keep you guys up to date, um, the progress of how it's all going. That's where we're at with all of that. That's a lot. Did they ever find their gas tank that was stolen? I don't it know. It wasn't stolen. They just had the same issue that we had at Station 3. Somebody unscrewed their pump and took the gas out of it. And we had the oh. same, potentially the same issue happened on station three, somebody loosened the pump or somehow the pump loosened and didn't work. Al figured it out and tightened it back up. But we're going to see more of that as people are struggling financially, right? right. With, with everything that's happened. As Manny said the other day, there's a car theft every day and there's a pursuit chase every day right now on stolen vehicles in town because people are looking for that 
something to get them by or get some cash in their pocket. So wow. it's, uh, my, I talked to my parents last night, home invasions are up huge in, uh, in the Twin City metropolitan area for the same reason people are just down on their luck and looking for any way they can get money. Right. Well, yeah. Are you talking Minneapolis St. Paul? Yeah. And then the law enforcement's defunded just yeah. about. Uh, one thing on this, we set a tentative date to go to the public for vote in April. So that gave us time if they did vote in favor to start preparing financials for a July one. Uh, gives us a couple months there. So we have to have by June, we have to have a draft budget to the county commissioners. And so we got a lot of work to do there. And so we set that April date as kind of our target to work backwards from with all these other little projects uh, over the next couple months. Uh, Josh and I are taking on the, the public meetings then, and we're hoping to do those in February and March. So we'll host public meetings in different areas of both districts um, to get information out to the public why and how and, and field their questions so that we can have a follow-up in April if that's when we choose to do it or May if we get delayed. So that's kind of the focus of the group. So again, thanks Angie and Kelly for all their hard work on it. Okay, uh, moving on to the full-time wildland position. Hopefully we'll be able to take this off next month, but tomorrow we're conducting those interviews. We set up an assessment center that uh, the applicants will zoom in and they'll have a series of skills that they'll have to demonstrate and then go into a traditional interview format after that. Manny's built a rubrics on how to how they'll be graded and uh, Rusty and Manny worked together on that uh, and finished it up today. So we're excited for this. This is just another step for District 2 and our community to be better served and to reinforce the wildland team with Rusty to give him help um, and grow that program for the future. So uh, we're excited about that. Are the candidates all internal or? No. Really? No, we have candidates from around the region, Montana, Colorado, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a handful from inside the district also, and some of those are in the finals now. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them that maybe potentially might have made the finals and have taken another job, uh, got offered another fire job, so uh, just couldn't wait for us to, to get through that process. So. Uh, so it's pretty neat to see our members and also people from the region applying for that. Yeah, it's yeah. very nice. Anything else? on that? There's those crickets again. <clears throat> Wildland repay savings. She would like me to. Yep, you got it. Right. The previous two months we have Asked the board to temporarily transfer some money from our savings account to Wildland to cover those bills. Um, as you saw in the treasurer's report, we got a very large sum of money into our um, Wildland account. So we are now able to repay that temporary transfer. The first check was for 20,000 and the second check was for 30,000. So we are asking the board to approve a transfer from Wildland back to Western State Bank Savings in the amount of fifty thousand dollars. I move to approve such a transaction. All seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved. Thank you. Good because we signed the check. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to thank the board again for keeping us afloat. And we do have plans in place for next season. So we don't need to worry about this with me being gone so much. And the only one that was doing the billing, we kind of got ourselves in a hole. So it's great. Who will that go into, Jordan? It will go to Western State Bank Savings account. That is currently sitting at two hundred and eleven thousand seven dollars and thirty seven cents. Oh yeah, there we are. The whole fifty thousand. The whole fifty thousand. Yes. 
That 211 is with the 50? No. no. Okay. That's, no, that 211 so is by itself. So are we going to have to do something with that account? That's why I was curious. Yep, we do. And that is our that's next point. <laughs> Okay. Might as well just move on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> so Anita and myself and Jordan zoomed a conference call uh, a week ago or so to look at our financials. And we came up with a couple proposals. And Anita, if I got this wrong, correct me. Um, but the first thing was to address the wildline account. Obviously, we've just received 460000 and we're going to get another... 300,000 in there in the coming weeks. Um, we propose to split our wildland account into two accounts, one checking and one savings through Western States Bank. That will allow them to have an operational account using their checking. It'll allow them to have a savings account to draw upon when they need to without having to draw upon our general account for the district, if that makes sense. So they'd be sustainable financially with those two accounts. So our proposal is two Western State bank accounts, one checking, one savings for wildland. Next, we have an overabundance of money. As you can see, we're pushing up on the $250,000 threshold for collateralization uh, on a number of accounts. And to accommodate the extra money coming in that's going to be used for those other projects, uh, it was our recommendation that we open up a first interstate account with a six month CD consisting of $100,000 and a 24 month CD consisting of an additional $100,000. That gives us a little bit of space in our existing accounts to absorb some money. And I want to preface this that in January, we have a check for $369,000 to write for station two, which is budgeted out of our general account, but we have in savings. So we're, we're going to be okay, but just so you know, you have $369,000 that we're going to spend in January when you see that check come across. <laughs> that's, that's about half of Steve's normal monthly mortgage payment, I know. But, um, yeah. Uh, after we make that payment, we'll have uh, four more of those payments, four more years of that payment. And our goal is to reserve that money out of our general fund every year so that it's budgeted without having to touch our reserves. But for, in my mind, I've always wanted to keep that amount in reserve in case something bad happens. We always had a payment in the bank for the build, right. just in case the bottom fell out someplace. So this allows us to do it by putting that 100,000 in a 24 month CD. It keeps that money safe. It keeps it isolated um, and it keeps it adding a little bit of interest, which is not a much. We'll, we'll make enough to buy a postage stamp off of it. But, um, <laughs> and then that six month CD, it keeps it safe but we can roll that another six months if we don't need it at the time. We can roll another 12 months. We can continue to roll that, but it pulls $200,000 out as a rainy day fund for that building in the event we had to draw upon it at some point. Did I get it right, Anita? You did. So that's our proposal to you is to, to open up a new Western States account, which would be a savings account for the wildland program and to open up a new first interstate account, which would consist of a six month CD of 100,000 and a 24 month CD of 100,000. Now are we, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Next, um, are we gonna have a separate accounting forms just for wildland? So, you know, cause I know we have to keep them separate and who's gonna be responsible for that? And do we have to check some balances? I mean, are we going to look at it every month? Yep, you are responsible for it as the board, so you'll be the governing body. But we do have a separate accounting for wildlife. So we so have Jordan will do that. currently, if we merge, so one of the deficiencies in our uh, audit every year is span of control. We changed that this year and improved it by um, 
the bills now go to Jordan, the process, they go to Manny to review, they go to me to review, then they go to you to review. So we added a layer with Manuel in there. If we merge, our vision is they also have a part-time uh, office person that takes care of their bills named Kim. Right. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Thank you. I'm getting old. Um, we would keep Kim on in the same role that she is now in the office, but she would then take, we would divide again some of those tasks, whether Kim took the wildland portion or Jordan took the payroll portion or Kim took accounts receivable, they're going to work out their plan, what that looks like, but it'll add another layer, another set of eyes in the delegation of duties and oversight. So hopefully we can start to get that out of the auditor's notes. With that, my vision is, is that one of them takes the wildland program alone. So you're going to get a wildland report um, with their financials every month on there to review in addition to our general fund report. So that's the long answer for your question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the one thing that Jason, you didn't say was, so if we move $200,000 out of the savings account, there's, if I remember right, I'm going by my memory, 211,000 in the account. And seven dollars per cents. Okay, in there now. We move two hundred thousand dollars out, but we're going to put fifty thousand dollars back yeah, in. Yeah. So the savings account will then have sixty-one thousand mm -hmm. dollars, two hundred thousand to the new account. So there's still sixty-one thousand dollars in the savings account as a cushion, if we were to ever need it for any reason. So, I mean, you said that around about, yeah. but we didn't break down that. So I thought that might be helpful. And we're going to get a large mill levy check, which we got today for 500,000. We're going to get a large mill levy check again at the end of the month, uh, medium sized mill levy check again for January. And then we're going to get large mill levy checks again in May. So uh, that savings account that we're opening up space in, that's going to have $61,000 in it, right. is going to be where you're going to move a couple hundred thousand dollars over the next couple months to, to accommodate that. Is that right, Anita? Yeah. Do we need to vote on these in two separate issues? Yeah, probably. I got that here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just waiting for the conversation to yeah. get to that point. Anything, you want to add anything else? Or? Steve, did you have a question? Yeah. That was my quote where I just wanted to clarify when I started to talk that I just thought we needed to do this in two separate deals. Okay. So I would like to mention that in our general fund, we are sitting at $202,000, and what you have to deposit right now is around $600,000. Um, so it's obviously way over. Already, when you make this one deposit. Mm. Except for next month, you had a red check for three hundred sixty-nine yes. thousand. Sure. So, so I, there's no sense in moving it one day and right. 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 So we need to get a letter to cover us for that one month, or attempt to get a letter to cover us for that one month. Last time I tried to get that letter, it was like pulling teeth. <laughs> I had to go talk to the president of the bank, and they still didn't get it. Really, true. Um, it took us what four months to get yeah. something because they were saying that they'd never written a letter letter and i said yes you have <laughs> multiple is that a western, times is that a western states yes. yes. yeah it's painful yeah. to deal with but we are going to have eight hundred thousand dollars sitting there for for a month. Yeah. And it's only days. FDIC guaranteed to 250. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. What about to alleviate that issue? I mean, you know that the payment is due. There's nothing that says we can't make the payment early. Early. So I have the bill so made already. That we deposit the money and then cut the check. We'll come and sign it and get it, you know, kind of one day. There's a couple pennies that we earn by keeping that money in the bank for that day. So it's up to you whether that's worth it or not. Um, Jordan and I talked about that earlier, and 
um, in the past, and we run into this problem every yeah. December. Mm -hmm. We get this big check, and we know that we have expenses coming in January that in the past we've held the money in that account and just demanded collateralization from the bank. And uh, do they have a new president? Because the last one was yeah. phenomenal to work with. Yeah, I I don't know. I met with the same gal. She has blonde hair, about the hair I can't, she sits right there inside the front. I met with her twice. The third time I went back to the bank, they had me go meet with this guy. And he called their sister something or other and somebody else because somebody was on leave and it, it just became that they said that they gave us what they could. And so we visited then with the auditors and they said they had sufficient for the records. Yeah. So then the, it was dropped. Right. So the times that I've gone in, I've met with the lady in that first office on the left. G G Gia, Gina? Oh, you're talking, yeah, you're, yeah, it's Gina. Yeah. Um, I always talk to Dave Cook when I come back. Oh. Steve has to do the same thing for his account. So. <laughs> <laughs> and also Gina, but Dave Cook is the one that, and I thought he was the, at one time the president. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember his name right now. So, so I understand properly. Um, we get a letter from them that guarantees our excess money above the two hundred fifty thousand. Right. So it sounds like they're reluctant to give that because it's not. Well, they guarantee. said they. It, the form of a letter wasn't giving us what we were asking for. And then what would it then? <laughs> I don't remember God what only it knows. said. It was written, they but, gave us a letter, but it didn't It didn't say in so many words exactly yeah. what we wanted. It didn't it say, say your money is insured. Right. 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 It basically right. was like mm -hmm. a breakdown of a bunch of random numbers that really right. didn't make too much sense to us. Mm -hmm. um, Are they a politician? Or? And so I presented that to the auditors and they said that's sufficient enough. So, yeah. But that also took what, four months to get that? Yeah. And by the time you do that, we go through that. I mean, I'm going to have to stop gone. there tomorrow and do it again. Mm -hmm. um, and we can try again. The other thing, when First Interstate um, talked to us about opening the new account, they expressed that, that we wouldn't have to go and get that letter that it automatically was protected. Mm -hmm. So if, if it becomes an issue with Western State Bank to do this, then I think you move or you open up another account at First Interstate Bank for that cushion or that savings and you don't have to go through this because mm -hmm. Western State Bank has never said that to us. Mm -hmm. Where first interstate did. Because if we want something in writing, the talk is cheap. You know, that's I mean, exactly right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I guess the bottom line is is what what is this one month gonna be to us for the next audit? Are we gonna we get the, get the, gonna we'll get the letter <laughs> from them? If we don't yeah. get the letter, they'll probably make a comment saying, like, like they did you know, this time. Two years in a row there. Right. Oh, they it's been, been that way ever since yeah, I've every, been at this yeah. department. Every oh, single year. So there are two yeah. things every year. Every year. Yeah. Every year we have the same thing. Yeah. And so. the auditors are well aware of it. Yeah. yeah. So they know that we're trying to make amends to it. It's just the they're baffled that the bank hasn't been able to provide us that. And they did, they did provide us. We almost went a whole year. And every time we hit that threshold, they mm -hmm. generated proof that we were insured. And what happened this last year? I don't know why. I think the they very first started. month or the second month I was here, I got a letter saying it was covered. And then, you know, so, in the middle of the year when we needed it again, it suddenly didn't exist. Probably what, what we, we need to do mm -hmm. is take a copy of that letter. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what I was Which I believe uh, MHP has right now along with all yes, the Yes, that's what right. happened last time. Yeah. 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 But if they're the done with the audit, yep. you can get that back, take a copy of that exact letter mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. say, this is what we need. Yeah. Then I think we'll be in a better situation. We just couldn't give them a copy because everything was at the auditor. 
Right, right. Well, under new business for next month, do we talk about uh, opening up another one at First Interstate? We'll have to see. Huh? We'll see have if they to give us service this week. Right, yeah. But that's I mean, a possibility. It's, yeah. it's hard to switch yeah. midstream in the middle of a financial year on that because that's where all her checks are. So we'd have to buy all new checks. We'd have to, we'd yeah. better to, if we were to move those Western state banks, we'd be better to move them on July 1 with the new fiscal year. Well, then you, and you can keep your operating account at Western Bank yeah. and just move the savings. But, you know, it's two of one, half a dozen of the other. But just something to remember and to consider. Your idea, if we can't get that copy of the letter or whatever, let's just go ahead and do the check and then we don't have to worry about it. And I do have that bill made. I can quickly print the check tonight and Amen. have it ready and ready. It is, um, I mean, $300,000 is going to give how much in interest? For $30. $30. $32. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I think we're better off rather than going through the hassle trying to get letters and doing all that. Let's, I liked your idea, Nita. I just, I mean, we have never. You're, you're still going to be old. Yeah. Yes. Writing the three hundred sixty-nine thousand dollars check doesn't keep us from being over two hundred fifty thousand. No, right. So that's that's it, true. It's it, you're still over, mm. and but not by that much. <laughs> but we're by still about over. Double. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're, you're still getting a couple hundred thousand dollars over there. <laughs> What's the max money we can put in there? I mean, it's insured to 250000 each account, but can we just keep adding different accounts there? Nope. So the way FDIC, FDC works is that it's all insured to two fifty, dollars unless the bank has an additional protection plan on it. So when I worked with Shields, right? So I had $12 million account. We didn't have six accounts at 250,000, they just provided insurance. They worked with those big vendors to make sure they insured them separately from the federal government. And that's what we used to get from Western states is they covered it underneath their um, umbrella or whatever that, I can't remember the name of it, the term for it right off the top of my head, but they covered it. And that's what we didn't get this last time from which got us in the ding on our audit. And, and this guy didn't seem to know what it is. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't sound right to me. Well, no. they were convinced that they had given us what we needed. Yeah. So we need to get go back to get the original one, which is what actually the auditor had verbatim what needed to be in there. And they gave it to us. So we need to get a copy of it. We need to go back down there and say, this is what we need. And they're like, oh, that's what you need. That's that's what's happened here. That's probably, don't. yeah. And I imagine it's a change of people and what not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I did. I went down there four times. I know because I even offered to go down yeah. one time. I'd be willing to write a letter tomorrow with Angie's signature on it and my signature um, to their board of directors for Western States mm -hmm. and say we cannot continue to have this right. and cite the McGee Hearns Pies. Mm -hmm. And any failure of providing this additional protection in the future may cause us to move our accounts mm -hmm. in the future. that would probably be a good idea mm -hmm. that would get some traction going because they don't want to lose i mean it's they don't it's not a ton of money but it's not millions like a corporation but it's, it's still, still a lot it's of so money. Yep. Yeah. Yep. so I'll, I'll draft a letter it won't be until tomorrow afternoon i'll send it a copy to all yeah. all of you angie can sign it i'll sign it and then we'll we'll take it down there tomorrow. Okay. well i have to take I have to go to Denver tonight to take Pat down to Denver. So I think we're fine waiting a day. Okay. We have interviews all until one o'clock tomorrow anyhow. Right. So Wednesday, so actually we better be Okay. We'll draft that letter and get it out for review for all of you guys tomorrow. And then we'll get it signed Wednesday with your additions or subtractions. Okay. Cliff, you're included in that too. Okay. Okay, I so move that we set up a wildland account at Western States Bank. Actually, two accounts: one savings and one checking. The checking's already there. Yeah, yeah. the checking's already okay. So it's savings. Just to open up the savings. Right, right. Okay. 
So can you say that again? <laughs> really? <laughs> Open a new Western State savings, savings account, account for the wild Seven. team. Right. Okay. So we have two, then we will, we will have two existing accounts, one savings and one checking. And for, for wildland. With wildland, yes. So I have, I have a first, do I hear a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now for the proposal for the new first interstate bank account. The C, that's a, those are just CDs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just the 100,000 going into six months and a hundred thousand going into the 24 months. I will so move that we open that. And is that under Wildland's name as well? No, 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 no that's no, under no, our name. No, okay. No. Okay. I'm I so move. <laughs> and it comes out of the Western States savings account going to first interstate. We probably need that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Add yeah. that to my proposal. <laughs> Okay, I have a first, do I hear a second? I will second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Can Chuck hear us at all? Can who? Cliff? Cliff, can he hear us at all? Yeah, hmm? Cliff, you can hear us. I haven't heard. He can't, he can't yeah. say aye either. Or, He's not like that He's yet. He's not telling you. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. That's right. I keep looking up at him to make sure well, he's still there. That's why, because it's like I don't, yeah. I don't hear anything. So, yeah. I, sorry, Cliff. Okay, so am I on? I don't know. Have been approved, so we will move forward on those. So, yeah, I can hear noise. Anything else under unfinished before we move on? Okay. Under new business, the safer school reimbursement. Okay. Uh, this month we had two people sub uh, submit safer requests to cover our schooling. The first one is Amanda Creekbaum. She attended both Utah Valley University and College of Southern Nevada. Um, she took two classes. One was emergency services management, which she received a 99.4%. And the second class was geology, which she received a 90.22%, um, both obviously passing. And she is requesting a total that covers her tuition and books in the amount of $1,529.11. And our second applicant um, is Erin Edwards. She went to American Military University and she received an A minus in intelligence collection. And she is requesting $1,175 to pay for her tuition. I move to pay these to um, reimburse safer reimbursements for the school as submitted. No second. And we have proper documentation from our mom. Yeah, I've got it right here. Okay, perfect. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Kind of sounding like there are some overachievers these days and A minuses. How cool is intelligence collection? <laughs> That's another question. I know. Okay, so MOU. Oh. S-R-2-1. <laughs> yeah, it should be an S. So in your electronic documents, you should have an FT2, FT8 MOU agreement. And this is the agreement for Rescue 2-1. And the, if I was to write an appendix for this, it would basically say that, or an abstract for this, it would basically say that uh, we are loaning Rescue 2-1 to District 8 
with them taking ownership of the insurance, the maintenance and care of the vehicle until we either merge or not merge. At the time that we don't merge it, so in April, the public said, nope, we're not going for it. The MOU would dissolve and they would have first opportunity to purchase the rescue truck from us at that time. And then you're going to do an addendum then for this, or I just add it in, or, uh, or does it say it somewhere that I'm missing? Uh, the addendum actually lists the actual vehicle. Okay. And that's, I just didn't print that page. It's the rescue truck vehicle. Okay. It's parked in our back lot right now. We have it fully stripped and out of service, and it's been there for about what, 45 days now, mm -hmm. and it's, there's no plan for it currently. I'm not very good at reading. Legalese? Yes. <laughs> but, uh, so, if you can explain to this cowboy here, the term of this agreement is from January 1st, 2021, or the effective date, which is later through January 1st, 2021. Yeah, so if their board doesn't sign and date it until after um, January 1st is what they're saying. So okay. it would start January 1 unless either party didn't sign it until the date that you actually signed. Okay, okay, I just, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. We thought we better put it in writing. Yes. Agreed. Are they going to put their own logo on? They're not going to touch it at this point because we don't know what logos we're going to put on anything. So right. his plan right now they have a, a trailer, a small little cargo trailer that has all their rope rescue stuff that they use for Kirk Gowdy in, in the backcountry. They're just going to take all the stuff that's in that trailer and put it in the box on this so they just have a vehicle to drive instead of hooking onto the trailer. Right, right. Yeah. Now liability wise they're going to insure it but have we checked with our then we're okay? We'll remove it off of our insurance. Okay. But we still own it though. Yep. Yeah, we checked with the insurance agent that if they got in an accident or injured somebody that yep. because we own it, that's yep. who gets sued is the owner. The MOU mm -hmm. is they're taking it's like if you um lease a property mm -hmm. that apartment renter has to have rental insurance too, otherwise they're not protected. Mm -hmm. It's a similar situation okay. here. So um so that takes care of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the, the insurance on it is Pretty limited because it's a 2003 vehicle. So, yep. well, okay. With it being that, well, is there an agreement? Say, what happens if they run it off the road and then tow it? Is yep. that in here too? It's all in there. Any maintenance damage, they're they're liable for for the vehicle. But we don't have a pre agreement number. Okay. If you look at paragraph five, item C, it says that the district eight will carry appropriate liability, comprehensive, and collision insurance yep. on the apparatus throughout the term of this agreement. Mm -hmm. So that covers all of that. Okay. Did they review this. Yep, it's going to their board this uh, at their board meeting to sign also. Wrote this up. Who typed this up? This was uh, State of Wyoming and Josh worked on it. Okay. Yep. Mark? No, nope. uh, Josh McClack and State of Wyoming and State Forestry. State Forestry uses the same form for um, their own vehicles that are given to other agencies to use, like fire district. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we just modified it to fit our mm -hmm. So if they have any any changes, then we'll have to we'll have to read this again. Their board's already reviewed it once. They're just waiting for us to okay. sign it, and then they'll sign it. Okay. So they've made all their adjustments that they they didn't have any, but yeah. Okay. Yep. 
he presented it to them last month at their meeting. I might like, see this is all I know, right? You know, so if everybody is happy with what they said here, just trying to go through it. The catch was we didn't want them to buy it. Right. Reformat it. Yeah, it was just it didn't make sense to for them to give us twelve thousand dollars and and then uh emerge in what six months. Okay, like five B is perform regular routine maintenance on breed apparatus, blah blah blah. And uh, what is routine maintenance? Should that be spelled out? I mean, uh, service A one month, service B the next, service C, or you know, I mean, do we need to spell that out? Because I don't know that they would have the same routine as we do. That was probably better. Than this. <laughs> routine maintenance. Just a question. Yeah, I, again, this is really for a. a 180 days that they have the vehicle and it's going to go maybe 20 miles yeah, to, from town. The truck goes 5,700 miles between any service, so I don't think we're right. going to put any time that time. But if they had a flat tire, if they, it's all theirs. So they got to keep it operational. So. Yeah, if they put 100 miles on it in the 180 days of this deal, I'd be surprised. So do you want uh, a motion? Yes, at some point we will. Okay. <laughs> So what truck is this? Rescue 21. I can tell you that everything in um, special provisions and all of that is template language that goes in all state contracts. <laughs> it is, um, that is standard in every contract. A word for word contract word for word just like all the contracts i do for tourists under general provisions <laughs> and and the, actually the parties everything from the first paragraph all you're doing is filling in the date yeah i mean date the name and addresses the purpose of the agreement and then you pull that in the terms of the agreement you fill in the dates all of that is template language It's the same, almost identical to the form that we used when we um, took the ladder from State Forest Stream to us when we took ownership of that. So it's, it's uh, pretty standard. Yeah, I, I don't see any concerns whatsoever. I look at these all the time. Yeah, from my legal standpoint, it looks good to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion that we present, sign it, and present it to District 8 for their signature and turn the equipment over to them as soon as they sign it, right? Okay. I hear a second. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Okay. Thank you. New name. Uh, as of before the closing, 
the new name had 37% of the votes. The next closest was 29% of the votes. And that name is Laramie County Fire Authority. Second place was Crow <laughs> Creek Fire. Third place was Laramie County Unified Fire. And fourth place was Frontier Fire. <laughs> so pending, pending uh, legal, we have a legal question on if the state of Wyoming recognizes the word authority instead of district. So we have feelers out on that to Deb to, to answer. Uh, there's no place that we can find in the statute that defines what a fire department's name should be, but yeah, we wanted to make sure. That. Yeah, there's not, but we wanted to make sure that we were okay there. Okay, you said the second one was Crow Creek? Yep. Third is Larry County Unified Fire, and the fourth was Frontier Fire. If so how do you reason, say that first one? Larry County Fire Authority. If for some reason like we can't name that, would it go... Would it revert to our second highest? We would probably have to go back to vote again. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, you're you're within be. when we get to number two and number three, you're within a couple people's votes. Okay, so sure. all those people that voted for Laramie County Fire Authority would then have to re-vote for gotcha. I'm gonna be like Trump and go to federal. Right. <laughs> well no, when my, when I was making my vote, I thought that was a good title because what if one of the other fire districts wants to come in yep. and then we're going to say combine unified fire district yep. you know. probably the most <laughs> encompassing so that it did provide yeah, opportunity for growth that's what i was thinking was that one i think we all liked crow creek or frontier or some of those name ones but um keeping that big vision that there's probably going to be more consolidations in the future mm -hmm. Larry County Fire Authority. Mm -hmm. Pooter Fire Authority, Loveland Fire Authority, all those are similar. So hmm. and yeah. that was Crow Creek Fire District? Fire Rescue. Fire Rescue. Hmm. <laughs> Get a lawsuit. Fight yeah. So many stickers. Yeah. And, and you know, we've been talking about kind of easing into that and because it is expensive. So do a little bit each year and it's probably a five year process by the time we get all done. And it closes tonight. Closes tonight. So you'll let us know. Yeah. Just let things wear out and like shirts. Yep. Your new one will say anything. Right. Yep. Yeah. Just anything that order, we order in the new coach for everybody. That's yeah. So you gotta keep Sorry. you gotta keep the same symbol, but just no. Nope. So that's the next part is the logo design will go out for submissions, and then we'll have a vote on that after that again. And the goal of that, or the reason versus us just deciding, was to have ownership right. by the membership. Right. So mm -hmm. it's that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna we'll go out to the public again or to the memberships of both organizations for design of the new logo. And, uh, this logo I made with Lori Hogan when I moved here in 2011 because we wanted a new identity so we wanted to my chain. So it's not that old of logo at this point. Anything else for new business? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Anything else for new business? I'll say. <laughs> they're, they're done already. Yeah. Harry? Anything else for the good of the order? I'd like to Does thank you. We have one last uh, thing. We can do okay. <laughs> Cliff, do you have anything? You want to add? Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can't hear you, can't hear you. I'll, I'll be glad when we don't have to do Zoom meetings anymore because my equipment and your acoustics are difficult to hear. <laughs> no, I don't think he's muted. Well, he was. It was in that upper right hand corner. There you go. Hello. Am I on? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can, you, yeah. can you hear me now? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. I was just going to say that I'll be glad when I don't have to do a Zoom meeting anymore because the acoustics in my equipment are awful. 
<laughs> so I'll look forward to meeting everybody in person in January. Okay. Congratulations, too, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the crazy house. <laughs> yeah, you guys are way too busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we have one more item that's not on the agenda, and we have a going away for Miss Anita, <laughs> since this is her last meeting with us. So we will, we will adjourn the official meeting at 9 o'clock, but we will resume the party <laughs> as of now. <laughs>